Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome to the channel. I'm Ben. This is my Husqvarna 701 Enduro and today I'm going to be turning this wheelie machine into an adventure bike using the Tusk Highland X2 rackless bag system. <laughs> As always, big thanks to Rocky Mountain ATV for sending this stuff out and an absolutely huge thanks to any of you guys who've been using my affiliate links down in the description. You can click on those links and buy anything on Rocky Mountain ATV. And even though it doesn't cost you anything extra, it makes a big difference to me. And it's honestly the only thing that keeps this channel going in the same capacity that it is. So really, really do appreciate it when you guys take the time to use those. Now currently this is set up pretty well for day trip adventures. We've got a tube in here along with some spoons that will fit both the front and rear axle. Really kind of a slick combination. Then in here, we've got just some odds and ends that I always want kind of right at my fingertips here. This works really well. This is the small version of the bag. I've got the large one over there on the Gen 3 KLR, and I would say both of these are pretty well sized for the bikes. I do often find myself wishing for a little bit more room in here just because I've got the larger one, but this really does a great job of keeping just about everything I need. Moving towards the back here, we've got the smallest version of the dry duffel bag here. This will actually fit on top of the rackless system as will the slightly larger 22 liter one that I've got over there on the TW200. But just for a little bit more storage, I might end up throwing this medium dry duffel here that I used to have on my Tenere 700 on the back of this. And you'll kind of see how that all goes once we get the new rackless system on here. So if you guys are interested, I can kind of show you what I've got in here. Got the MSR packable rain jacket, first aid kit, and my toolkit with my little tire pump in here. And this just kind of has some essentials in it, some sockets, electrical tape, zip ties, pliers, some tools for the tires. Did also have the Tusk toe strap strapped onto the other side of it, just in case. Now all that stuff, I kind of just swap from bike to bike when I'm taking each of them out on different adventures, but I always leave a sweatshirt in every single bag on every single bike. First of all, it's nice just to kind of have some padding up against the rack here, but it's also really nice to be able to just always have one of these just in case you're out on a ride and it gets a little bit too cold. Oh, and I guess this is always stuffed in there too, just because the 701 is the only bike that needs the Torx bits. So we'll get that out of here. So in this kit, we're going to get the two bags as well as this guy here, which these are going to get attached to. We'll get into that once we get it on the bike. Then we've got the heat shield to keep these from melting on the big can on the 701. And then we've got this extra bag here and some molly sticks that will allow us to attach this to the back of this whole system. And this is actually a great spot to put this first aid kit. So if I toss the centerpiece up here and flip this section over, you can see we've got a slot here cut out for the gas cap on both a 690 and a 701. And then we've got these holes on the sides here. They're going to match up with the three holes in the side bags. So this is going to get mounted essentially in the back and the middle first. And then we will pick one of the three positions in the front depending on where we want these side bags to hang. So to get started, I'm gonna grab four of these and stick them in from the bottom side, like so. And to make sure they stay in place, I'm just gonna give them a few taps with a hammer here. So now the hardest part for me, time to make a decision here. I've got this centered on the bike and I've got the gas cap sort of centered in the opening here. I'm gonna line up the back hole here with the back hole on the center piece. And then we'll just kind of see what this looks like. So that would be the top hole. It would give me the most angle forward. Right about there is the middle. And that would be the lowest position. I think I'm gonna probably go right about in the middle and we'll just see how that works. So that means I'm gonna install these last two in the middle holes here and here. One thing I'd recommend is double checking that everything is lined up here before you start hammering these in. Seems like it can be kind of deceiving when you're looking at it from the backside only. Luckily it does seem like they pull out fairly easy if you have to. Toss that back on and get our heat shield installed. So I'm gonna leave this kind of down at the bottom. It will be a little bit more noticeable here, but I won't have to worry about sticking a larger tire on here and possibly having that contact this if it was on the inside here. I'll snug that down. Now the other reason I decided to mount this here is it will give me the option to pull a bit of this out 
snip some off, and then hide the excess up in here where it's not going to be able to poke the tire, the bag, me, or anything else. So I'm gonna grab my bags, a four millimeter Allen, and the rest of my fasteners, and we'll get these mounted up. middle one might be a hair off, but I think I should be able to get that in no problem. Yeah, a little bit of a pain, but it goes in. So I'll get that other middle one in, tighten these all down, and then we'll strap it in place. So at the back here, I'm gonna string all my lines through. Then I'll run them all back through. Now with those positioned, we can check to see if we've got this where I want it. I think maybe a little bit further back would be good, but somewhere around there. Snug these down. So now down at the bottom of the bag here, we've got this really long strap and the little cam buckle here. So what I'm gonna do is put all the slack down through my empty passenger foot peg here, run the end through the elastic part inside of the Velcro slack catcher here. Then we'll stick the end through the buckle. Cinch that down tight. Again, put this through the elastic part. Now you could take up all of this slack and use the Velcro to keep it in place. But because this is so close to all the moving parts in the back wheel, I think what I'm gonna end up doing is probably just taking all my slack out, snipping this about here, and then just using a lighter to singe the end of it so we don't end up with a bunch of frayed ends. That seems much safer. So once everything else is in place, we'll cinch these down good and tight. And this just clips over the top here. And we've got the two on the sides. One thing I did notice about this that I might find kind of annoying eventually is that this bag will sort of get in the way when I need to get into my side bags here. I'd rather not have to pull the top bag off every time I want to get in these. But it seems like we will still have some amount of accessibility here. I wonder if you really need to pull this off every time. It seems like that would be kind of annoying. No, I bet you get around it by just unclipping it and putting it to the side. So I think all that's really left is to stick this pouch on the back here and that will get secured using these molly sticks. So I'm just gonna stick this through one loop on here and then what I'll do is send it through the center three straps on the back of the bag. And then after you get through those, it'll come through this last one on the top of the bag. Definitely the most difficult part of the install. So with that all the way through on the other side, I'm gonna push this tight over here so it goes on top of the first web here and then clip that into place. So then I've just got one more on the back to do that'll work the same way, except I'm gonna put this in from the opposite direction. So when you go to check these bags out on Rocky Mountain ATV's website, you'll notice that you can order this as just a base system, which is essentially what I got since I already had the medium dry duffel laying around. You can order this system just kind of like what you see here today with this medium dry duffel. You can also order it with the small side load duffel bags. This is a 22 liter and this will line up with the Velcro on the midsection here. And 
I've got to say, I think I appreciate the look of this a little bit more. Definitely kind of cleans things up a bit. It doesn't seem like it's hanging over so much. Kind of fits the slim aesthetic of the bike a little bit better. But I think the minimal sacrifice in looks with the medium dry duffel on here is going to definitely be worth the extra carrying capacity. But regardless of which top bag you decide to go with, you can order either setup along with their large bottle holders. And these, I think, are definitely going to be a necessity, especially with the slightly smaller bags here compared to what I've got on my KLR. I did install the small bottle bag holders on the bags on this bike and I've got to say I'm a little bit disappointed that they don't fit these Rocky Mountain ATV insulated bottles. It seems like they would fit down the top part here but once you get to the somewhat insulated section here they just will not go in any farther so as much as it would be nice to be able to carry this little bit of extra water it seems like these much lighter plastic bottles were really my only option and these only hold 24 ounces so that's why i'm really looking forward to having these which should fit my big bottles here without any issues actually it looks like we've got plenty of space in there you could even fit a larger bottle in now, i think it's worth mentioning that when you go to order this system if you just get the base system like i did you are going to have to order these separately there are actually two listings on their website for these there's just a large bag option that's going to come with these straps but no molly sticks there's also a separate listing that has the small version of this bag and the large version and that will come with both the straps and the molly sticks if you are going to order one of the top bag options there is yet another option that comes with one of the top bags and these bags so just make sure you read through everything and that you're going to get everything that you need so to get these installed it's fairly similar to this bag up here we'll just have to alternate the webbing until we get down to the end you will of course have to decide which side you're going to stick the molly stick on i think i'm going to go with the sort of front here just so when the wind is blowing this can't kind of pick up and flop around Actually, I think just to make this a little bit easier, we'll start up here. And then we'll just fight our way down here. Clip that into place. And as much as I don't like installing them, they definitely do provide you with a nice tight seal there. It seems like that should be pretty happy there. Definitely nice that I can carry that little bit of extra water in there. So without actually having anything in any of these bags, I guess other than my water bottle here, I would say I think everything seems to fit up pretty well. It seems like it should work pretty well together. I think I should be able to get all my camping gear in here for a day or two worth of riding and camping. But of course, I'm not really going to know any of that until I actually start sticking some stuff in here. So let's load the bike up for some camping and we'll see how everything fits. So to give you guys an idea of what I'm going to be loading the bike down with, this is everything that's going to have to fit in both the top bag and the two side saddle bags. So we've got sleeping bag here, sleeping pad here, which is inflatable. We've got a couple changes of clothes in there, my tent, we've got jet boil camp stove, widget pump, light, toilet paper, a couple other toiletry type items, soap and that sort of thing. I've got all my food stuff in here. We've got the Tusk chair. And then of course we've got the other stuff that I pulled out of the bag. So this is going to be the packable rain jacket my toe strap, all my tools, as well as the special Torx bits. So let's see if I can get all of that in there and there and there. So the really nice thing about what I just did there is that I can now get to my campsite, undo these straps here, pick this bag up, and head right to my tent because this has got everything in it that I'm going to need inside of the tent. And I think just for ease of loading this stuff up, I'll set this to the side for now. I guess I don't know that I mentioned it yet, but these bags do come with these Defender dry bags. This is essentially just going to make sure that everything stays dry. I think these are somewhat water resistant, but definitely not waterproof. So if there's anything you don't want to get wet, I would suggest using these. 
And actually at the end of the night, it'll be kind of nice to be able to stick all of the food related items in a bag like this. Cinch it down, seal it off, and hang it up in a tree so the bears can't get it. And then they won't attack the bike either, or you in your tent. So I think I'm gonna stick the tool bag down in the bottom here, just keep that weight nice and low. Toe strap, I think maybe we'll strap on the outside. Rain jacket, we want, I guess, fairly accessible, but I'm gonna hope that I need the tent more than I need the rain jacket, so we'll stick that in there next. I think that'll just about do it for this one. And initially all this extra space back here sort of threw me off. Now it definitely makes sense to shove all the heavy gear as far forward as you can. You have less mechanical advantage on the back of the bike and the suspension that way. So from that aspect, of course, it totally makes sense. Aesthetically, maybe it looks a little bit odd until you start utilizing it for something like the Tusk chair here, which fits absolutely perfectly. It's nice and light couple straps. I think I'll actually just even be able to use the webbing on the bottom of this with these straps here. You can just strap the bag itself down and then simply unzip it when I get to the campsite, pull what I need out of here out, and then just leave it sit here. So I am really, really pretty happy with how all that fits together. That is super, super slick. Now the other thing that I was a little bit nervous about was how close all of this was going to be to my exhaust, but it seems like they definitely have that engineered perfectly. Nothing's going to come anywhere near it. Everything else seems like it is a good distance away from the tire, the suspension, the chain, and everything like that. I honestly have nothing negative to say about how this all fits on here, and I'm actually really, really impressed and happy with how all of this fits my gear so well. Now, obviously, everything that I stuck in there is super compact, and if you're looking for compact modal camp gear, definitely take a look down in the description. I'll have links to all that stuff that I shoved in here. Ooh. <laughs> Definitely going to need to adjust the preload. I can feel there's definitely some weight there. It almost might be maybe a little bit more noticeable than the weight on the KLR, but I don't really think so. And I think the only reason that would be just because that bike is heavy to begin with when you pull it off the side stand where this bike is 350 pounds wet. So... It definitely feels much better and much lighter in general, uh, but I can, I can definitely feel that there is some weight back there, which is obviously gonna happen no matter what your camping setup is. But other than that, man, I mean, I, I don't even know what's back there. I mean, how far back do I have to go? Yeah, I mean, in uncomfortable ways when I'm standing up. That might get in the way a tad, but Honestly, I don't think so. I'll probably bump up against it once in a while, but it seems like honestly that it's actually moving backwards now anyhow. So yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm gonna have plenty of room here. I mean, this is gonna work great. Obviously I'm not gonna be able to fit a passenger on here, but that's not the point of this luggage. The luggage is your passenger in this case. And maybe I could even use that as a little bit of a backrest, I guess that might be kind of nice. But there's only one way to know for sure how this is all gonna work out for me. And that's to get this thing out on the highway, on the county roads, and on some gnarly trails and actually do some camping with it. So if you guys wanna check that video out, make sure you're subscribed. I will put it out hopefully within a week or two of posting this. I will link it down in the description when it is available. Until next time guys though, make sure you get out and enjoy this beautiful world any chance you get. If you wanna pick up anything you saw in the video today and you wanna help me to continue making videos like this for you guys, make sure you check out those links down in the description. Thanks for watching, take care, stay safe, stay swanky and uh, just uh, get your bike loaded up and get out and get camping. Let's bring some mosquito repellent. Brr.